call this meeting to order. The City Commission of Miorate City. It is uh, Wednesday, November the 20th, approximately 6.02 p.m. Here in Commission Chambers of 5332 East, U.S. Highway 83, Suite A, here in Rio Grande City. This time we'll have the invocation by Commissioner Ramirez, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Gaza. As far as uh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to please guide us in this, uh, this meeting. I ask you to please uh, clear our minds, give us the wisdom to make the right decisions for the city of Rio Grande. In uh, your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, let the nation be, Texas and the one state of God, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next uh, business and orders item 1B, roll call and finding of quorum, Espana. Mayor Villarreal. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Garza. Here. Commissioner Flores. Here. Commissioner Ramirez. Here. Commissioner Jones. Here. You have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you. Next uh, business and orders item 1C, public forum. Nobody have signed anyone up. signed up for the record? No one signed up for public forum. Next we have 1D, proclamation, Star Psychology Club, 10th anniversary. And before, before we call, We'll go ahead and read the proclamation. The Rio Grande City Proclamation, whereas Elisa Arabia and Alex Arabia, assistant professors in the Department of Psychological Sciences or Science at South Texas College, have 20 years of combined teaching experience at STC. And whereas the brothers as natives of Star County and alumni of STC felt it was important to give back to their community and college by establishing a psychology club at the STC Star County campus in 2009. And whereas the psychology club provides a forum for students to learn more about psychology and stimulate interest in the field of psychology, socialize, become leaders and make a positive difference in the Star County community and at STC and whereas over the past 10 years there has been an increase in the number of psychology majors at Star County campus as well as in the retention and graduation rates in large part as a result of the psychology club and whereas the Star County campus psychology club has served over 650 members held 200 regular club meetings in addition to advisor officer meetings and hosted 78 fundraisers with over $36,000 fundraised, including funding $10,000 scholarships to graduating club members. And whereas the Stark County Campus Psychology Club is known for hosting several signature events throughout the year that have become a staple in Stark County. 11 Stark County mental health awareness conferences, five crossing disciplines, discipline conferences, four editions of Star County Campus Psychological Science, majors orientation, three editions of Department of Psychological Science faculty profile service or series, and the Meet the STCU TPA President's Conference. And whereas the Star County Campus Psychology Club volunteers in numerous events across Rio Grande City and Stark County, Texas, including the Stark County Relay for Life, Rio Grande City Art Walks, Rio Grande City's National Night Outs, Rio Grande City's Domestic Violence and Child Abuse Awareness Candlelight Vigils, Stark County Industrial Foundation and RGC Public Library events, RGC Boys and Girls Clubs Halloween Monster Bat Mash, RGC Unexplained Mysteries Conference, and festival, Rio Grande City's Color Rain Dash, and Casa de Esperanza Pantry Giveaway, free haircuts to name a few. And whereas the Stark County Campus Psychology Club has received numerous recognitions for its public service projects, including receiving 2018 Rio Grande City Star Volunteer Award, and whereas the Stark County Campus Psychology Club of South Texas College celebrates its 10-year anniversary. 
Now, therefore, I, Joel Villarreal, mayor of the great city of Rio Grande City, along with our city commission, do hereby proclaim November 20th, 2019, as Star STC Star County Campus Psychology Club Day. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, on behalf of my brother Eli and myself and all of the Psychology Club members present here, uh, some couldn't come, and all of the ones we've had throughout our 10 years uh, of existence, we do appreciate the mayor and the council for this recognition. And uh, it feels great to give back to the community. Uh, it feels good to help others, and that's one of the core values that we have in the club, helping others, teamwork, dedication, and optimism. And any time that you all need us in future events, we're going to continue being there, serving and helping uh, the great county of Star and, and the great city of Rio Grande City. So thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any members of the Psychology Club that would like to say a few words? <laughs> no? Well, uh, we do want to thank you for the service. I know you volunteer many hours. And uh, I've been to a couple of those, uh, many of those, and, uh, including the trash pickup and so on. And obviously there's a lot of um, service there when, when you have members that are willing to dedicate some, some time and effort. I know you do it on Saturdays and other days, so you cannot say enough about the volunteerism that you all show uh, year after year. So again, 10 years and many more, of course, but we cannot, uh, again, on behalf of our commission and the city, and uh, thank you so much for the work that you do and, and continue to do. And I know that all of the students that are represented here, you're gonna go on and continue volunteering in the future and maybe create your own clubs down the road <clears throat> because it, it is true, we need volunteers to make a community successful and because of those hours and time, we cannot say enough and thank you enough for all the volunteers um, amongst yourself and others that volunteer day and time. And again, it's, it's, it's wonderful to, to see that. So again, thank you so much for, for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, I, anyone else would like to say a few words? <laughs> no? If not, then let's go ahead and proceed up here and we can take a photograph. All the club members. Over here. We might need to stand up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead and come up to the front. Hello. Thank you. Congratulations. 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 Hi, how are you? Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, business and orders item 1E, departmental reports. Mayor and commissioners, uh, we've got uh, a few folks we'd like to uh, bring forward. Uh, we've got some new employees. We'll start with uh, some of the ones that are in the admin area. Uh, Ms. Melissa Garza 
uh, uh, just relocated her, stole her from the planning department. She was working over there temporarily. Uh, and uh, she's gonna be assisting me uh, with my workload. And we also just brought in our new public relations uh, employee, Ms. Custer. Would you would like to come forward and introduce yourself? I think most of our, everyone has, has met you by now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize Ms. Fultz and uh, Ms. Uh, Hernandez. They worked uh, in the veterans' uh, dinner not too long ago. By the same token, I believe Ms. Uh, Fultz entertained some folks from out of town. Would you like to talk about that, Ms. Fultz? I think I need to lower this. Yes, uh, thank you. We had, we had a very successful uh, veterans' appreciation dinner. We had uh, over 160 in attendance, so I felt it was very well attended. And uh, uh, right after that, we got ready for our social with Senator Seferini. We're very thankful that the Texas Library Association gave us the opportunity to, to host Senator Seferini. Uh, and, and she herself sent us a, a really nice thank you uh, letter and thanks the Texas Library Association for having the Rugan City as the, the librarians to, to give her that honor. So thank you again for those of you that got to be with us and attend, mm -hmm. and we look forward to having many other events. We've got one coming up December the 10th. We have our annual storybook Christmas and uh, free photos with Santa, and uh, uh, the coloring contest will be in the Stark County Town Crier very soon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Ms. Foltz. Ms. Hernandez, would you like to add on the Veterans Dinner and uh, what's coming up? <coughs> <coughs> Mayor Commission, like Mrs. Fultz mentioned, we had our veterans dinner. It was very successful. And we're also um, currently working on our float. We made contact with uh, most of the girls that will be present uh, on the float. We're just waiting for one to give us a call back and let us know. They'll all be uh, accommodated. They'll have a space. So hopefully everything works out great that day. Um, also, we're working on our Navi Fest. So we have a four day carnival coming into town a full-size carnival, so that's really exciting. And that's Saturday, uh, December 14th. So basically the, the carnival's coming December 12th, 13th, 14th, and the 15th. So December 14th will be um, a bit of a larger event because in addition to the carnival, we'll have live music, a poker run, a cook-off, a menudazo cook-off hosted by uh, LNF distributors. So they'll be providing all the prizes. And I think a little bit later on in the agenda, we'll talk about our headlining group and hopefully that gets approved because we already have a flyer waiting to be posted right after we sign the contract. <laughs> and um, working with the different departments on uh, this particular project and Public Works has been helping us put up the lights. Uh, we did order more lights this year to do the lighting of the main street. So we should start on Britain Avenue uh, since we have the addition of those zigzag lights and we'll put back our Christmas tree. So getting ready for Christmas, we're excited. So we'll have some additional ones as uh, compared to last year. Yes. So, okay. so we doubled Fantastic. the so. Get ready to pay the light bill. Were we providing uh, <laughs> some, some incentives or assistance for the uh, business owners downtown Main Street to put up lights or are they just doing it on their, on their own? This is a, the zigzag lights yeah. that... Those look really nice as well, but you know, to light up the whole Second oh, Street and Main um, Street, are we um, providing some type of assistance with lights or they're just providing their own? I guess we would need to ask our Main Street program about that. I know they've um, <coughs> distributed lights in the past. I'm not sure if they'll be doing that this year, uh, but I could definitely follow up so that everybody decorates their storefront. Right, that would look nice. Yeah, I think so too. Do we have anything planned to move on to Second Street and also install lights there? Yes, I would like to eventually move on to the Second Street. The Public Works is like, because <laughs> they're having to stop the traffic because they have to hang. So basically, a wire is running across and they have to hook each and every light on the wire. So they're having to close one side of the road and, you know, deal with the 
Honking of the horn. <laughs> you don't want to be there. But yes, I definitely do. Uh, we're doing it in phases, obviously, because there is a cost factor associated. They're commercial lights, so they're not, they're priced. So that's why we're going to start that phase. I think we'll be good on Main Street for this year, and next year we can move on to Second Street and do also like a two-phase thing. It'll be a two-phase also idea. next year. Really nice. And then Public Works can pick up that light bill. I don't know. I mean, they're LED. <laughs> <laughs> they're LED, so I don't. They're LED, so they're. Be, oh, yeah. And that's something nice. that Main Street can do in visiting with the businesses and see what what they're willing to encourage them to. to I know they had uh, great participation in the Halloween uh, on Main Street event. All the businesses gave out, and I mean, granted, to purchase that the amount of candy that we had to purchase because the museum gave out, we ended up running out. I mean, you could probably do something great for Christmas too. Well, that was very well attended, it was. and businesses have cooperated, and, and they enjoyed. I think they had like 27 so. businesses. So I, I could see them wanting to do this too. Um, Me too. Visit with them. And we will. But yes, that's pretty Thank much what we're working on the holiday festivities for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Cruz. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, I got a lot of anxious little girls here that are waiting to get back to home so they can do their homework. So uh, I, I don't think they are. But <laughs> uh, so today we had a field trip and a troop 3051 uh, met us out at the new water plant, and we gave them a tour of the water plant. Uh, we explained to them the system, the way it works, how the process works of cleaning the water, and how they actually uh, get, get the end result. Uh, they even did some testing themselves, some samples, and uh, it's safe to say that the water is pretty good, right? Okay. <laughs> it passed the test. All right. <laughs> I was a little worried about that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but it passed the test, and they, they, we gave them a tour of how the process starts. And I want to thank uh, the troop leaders, if I can call them to come up, Ms. Rachel Balderas, uh, Ms. Elida Saldana, Saldana, and Ms. Brenda Gonzalez. You mind coming up? And I'm going to ask Ms. Guillen to come up as well, too. Um, obviously, they're the ones that help initi initiate this, this uh, field trip. And one of our very own, too, Ms. Maggie, uh, who also kind of helped us. And I, I'm really, I want to acknowledge her because uh, just getting that awareness out of what we do uh, to the community and especially young, young people like this so that they know what their city leaders do and what their city government's all about. So uh, I want to acknowledge, thank you. You guys want to say a few words? Actually, they have Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Hello, the microphone. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> My name is Cinco Guillen, and in honor of Troop 3051, we want to say thank you for the water plant tour. We learned a lot about the city water system. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Something tells me it runs in the blood with her. <laughs> but uh, so I want to thank him. I don't know if you guys want to take a picture with them real quick. Absolutely. Yes. Anybody else yes. want to say a few words? Yes. Come on up, please. Can you think we have enough? All right. <laughs> You're doing field trips. Nice. Hi there. Hi. 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 I think we need to do another. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, uh, just to close up on this, this was one of the things that uh, when I got with Mr. Perez and I asked him about, uh, you know, if we can do this, this is one of the things that we had talked about in the originally when I first came on is getting involved in the community and obviously trying to incorporate yourself as much as possible in the community. So I want to thank these ladies for all the stuff, services they provide to our community as well too because they're out there. They got to earn those badges. Those badges aren't given to them. So um, thank you very much, ladies, for everything you do. 
And I know one day, some of you ladies are probably going to be sitting behind there as well too, leading us. So thank you very much. Um, I'd like to introduce somebody real quick, uh, Mr. Perez, if possible. Yes. My, uh, uh, one of our new employees, uh, Ms. Melinda Garza. You wanna, how are you doing? Uh, she is our new billing clerk, so she will be started. She actually started today, and she is uh, with us over here with the billing clerks as well, too. So thank you very much, Mayor, Council members. Have a good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cruz. <clears throat> and just to add to the young ladies, I know this is our future generation and leaders of tomorrow right here. Um, definitely thank you for, for getting out there. We, I know we have future engineers there, probably future uh, doctors and lawyers. and um, So it's great to, to have you wanting to interest in this. And so thank you, Mr. Cruz, for uh, opening that up because uh, it's wonderful to have individuals that want to see our departments and how things operate and how things work. And, and certainly water department is one of the crucial elements as a city, as a municipality, to make sure that it's quality water um, and continue those, those uh, uh, ratings and whatnot. So, but again, ladies, thank you so much for, for coming out. I, we do appreciate you, you being here. So again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now we got Ms. Guillet, got some special visitors. Commissioners, we have with us this evening uh, two guests. The two young ladies that I'm about to present were recently crowned Miss Rio Grande City and Little Miss Rio Grande City at a pageant held on November 9th. I think many of you all were there and present uh, to see that. Let me formally introduce Carolina Alejandra Garcia, is the daughter of Mr. and Miss Jorge Garcia. She's currently a junior at Rio Grande City High School and the major of the Rattlerette drill team. Carolina is a devoted HOSA member and plans to attend Texas A&M College of Medicine where she aspires to become a physician assistant. She is a creative and optimistic person who, dr who thrives on learning and experiencing new things. When Carolina is not modeling for Missy's Modeling Studio, she can be found every Sunday at her local church being a devoted Catholic and instructing the youth of our community by volunteering as a cheer, tumbling, and dance coach for the South Texas Lightning. She is an animal lover and an avid PETA supporter. Once again, Carolina Alejandra Garcia. I'm also going to call up Danali, am I pronouncing that correct? Danali Avina. And she is the nine-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Jose Luis and Denise Avena. Danali is currently the fourth in the fourth grade at Academy for Academic Enhancement Elementary. She is very involved in school activities and participates in the AC2E Elementary Cheer Squad and is in UIL Oral Reading. She also participates in the Accelerated Reader Program and is an honor roll student. Participating in these activities at school has taught her about self-confidence, setting goals, friendships, and having a positive outlook. Her hobbies include singing, dancing, cheering, and watching YouTube uh, do-it-yourself videos. She is also currently a member of the Vaquero 4-H Club and looks forward to entering her projects in the fair this year. She enjoys baking, drawing, reading books, and competing in pageants. Competing in pageants is one of Denali's favorite things to do. She feels pageants help contestants make new friends and create everlasting memories. She enjoys spending time with her family and helping her grandparents with Sunday service at church. Serving in her community is also very important to her. She believes that we were put on this earth to love, be kind, and help one another. She has a strong belief that if we do these things, the world will be a much better place. She takes her role as big sister very seriously and loves being a role model. She hopes her baby sister will enjoy pageants as much as she does so that she can teach her everything she knows. In the future, she plans to pursue a degree in education to teach and inspire kids to become anything they dream of. What inspiring backgrounds for these young ladies. <laughs> Thank 
<laughs> okay, can we take a picture? Okay. Yes. We invite you to join us for a photo with our city commission, and they also have a gift. Did I miss anyone? I do want to say thank you ladies for representing Rio Grande City with pride and certainly what, what you're going to represent is the rest of the year so look forward to seeing you at all the events um, and again thank you so much for, for um, doing this and, and representing the city with pride and joy and, and uh, all the accolades that come with it so again thank you very much. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you. Perfetis. That's it. That's it. All right, next uh, business and orders item two, consent agenda. Just uh, item A, approval of departmental travel request. Letter B, approval of minutes from previous meetings. <coughs> and letter C, approval of action taken at the meeting of the RGC EDC held on November the 5th, 2019. Yeah, there are no questions or corrections. I move to approve uh, consent items uh, 2A, 2B, and 2C. Okay, we have a motion to approve consent agenda items A, B, and C by Commissioner Ramirez. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Flores. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, uh, business and orders item three, resolutions. Letter A, discussion and possible action to approve resolution number 2019-26. <coughs> Designating official city holidays for calendar year 2020. Mayor, in the packet you'll find the uh, dates uh, associated with the holidays. I mean, that we're looking to for your approval. We lost one day due to the uh, timing when it falls on the weekend. Oh, okay. So we didn't take it away. It just just so happened to be on the weekend <clears throat> compared to last year. That's the only difference there? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. That's a move to approve, ma'am. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner okay. Ramirez. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Jones. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is item four, contracts and agreements, letter A. Discussion and possible action to approve a music contract for Navi Fest. With Los Palominos. Ms. Hernandez? Do you have it in the packet? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Commission, before you have the contract for Los Palominos, um, the price is there. They're asking for a deposit. Uh, so they can reserve the date for us. So there, okay. there'll be a 90-minute set, um, and they're scheduled to play from 9:30 to 11. They wanted to play till 2 a.m. I said that's. Just <laughs> 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 All right. Is that the only band playing that uh, night, or are there other no, local bands? No, we have bands, um, so. La Costumbre will be playing as well, and uh, Los Más Románticos. And then we had another local group uh, reach out to us. Um, through Facebook actually uh, requesting that they wanted to play at the event. We still haven't discussed price, um, but they might be added too. So we, we're looking at starting the music either 6 or 7 p.m. And the, and the stage will be under the pavilion. 
Okay, I'll double that question. The event's going to take place at the Basilio de Real Park? Yes, okay. so the carnival um, should be on the parking lot, and then the music will be under the pavilion. Uh, we're going to have some vendors as well. And then the cook-off is going to take place on the actual street. I don't know if you all were present during the Freedom Fest, but we had done the car show on the actual street. Uh, so that's where we're going to be parking the cooking teams because the park, the actual park will be closed. Um, and then I know a lot of the cooking teams tried to leave afterwards. Sure. So that'll be a perfect location for them okay. to just. And then uh, once we do the announcements, most of them leave. And that's going to be done around 6 o'clock. Uh, and then it'll free up that uh, parking space that parking area at the end of that street, which is when we get the most attendance in, in the evening anyways. But we're just trying to make do with the space that we have because we have a lot of activities for that day. And for, uh, as far as Navi Fest, is that something we want to continue to have like on an <coughs> annual basis? Definitely, no. so this, this carnival that reached out are looking to come on a yearly basis. Uh, they'll be offering uh, the bracelet special that Thursday. The first day that they come in, it'll be okay. $10. So it's basically uh, 10, I believe 10 to 12 large rides. Uh, then it's uh, 10 games and four food truck kind of things. So it's big. <laughs> Mr. Garza looks shocked. <laughs> it's a big carnival. Yeah. All right. A full size carnival. So we're really excited. And I think it's, you know, great weather for us um, and something fun for, okay. for the community to do. Okay. So. Any other questions? If not, do we no. entertain a motion? Uh, Mayor, uh, I'd like to motion to offer Los Palominos a contract for a Navi Fest for an amount not to exceed $9,000 and subject to Los Palominos entering the contract terms presented and approved by the city attorney. Okay. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Ramirez. Second. Second by Commissioner Flores. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Post it. Yeah. <laughs> Next is item 4B, discussion and possible action to approve services by radio host Alexander Quintanilla for the 12th annual Chile Showdown. Ms. Gibb? Yes. Mayor, commissioners, the 12th annual River Grande City uh, Chili Showdown is set to be held on February 1st, 2020 in downtown Burberry City. The event is a celebration of traditional vaquero cooking and is designed to promote our rich culture and heritage at the heart of our city's historic downtown. Categories of the cook-off represent the foundations of vaquero style cooking, which include chili con carne, pan de campo, beef skirts, and chicken. Last year, 31 teams competed for the top prize and winning title. During this event, visitors were provided tours of the local sites and attractions aboard Bessie 3. Live music was offered throughout the day, encouraging dancing couples on the legendary kiosco. And I saw this, they were dancing at the kiosco. This year's event is expected to feature a dynamic lineup of entertainers, La Patrona 107.5 radio host and promoter Alexander Quintanilla, uh, Representaciones Alexander has proposed to engage five live bands to perform a DJ service, and he'll also serve as the event MC. In addition, the proposal includes the band's sound equipment, LED screen for messaging, a video commercial, and scheduled radio spots on La Patrona 107.5. Okay. <clears throat> That's a good package there. Ms. Gian, is that uh, amount uh, less than last year's amount? It is. Or? It yes. is. Actually, we worked them down from last year. We're getting more um, more for our buck. I think last year, I don't have the exact figure, but it was closer to 15. Little, yeah, okay. Yeah, based on right. an entertaining motion at this time. I shall move there. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Ramirez. We have a second. Second. <laughs> have a, co a second by Commissioner Jones. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. <laughs> Next uh, business and order is item 4C, discussion and possible action to select the lowest bidder for the St. Ives Utilities to support commercial center for the EDA project number 08010574. Commissioner and Mayor, we got um, Real Delta to go over those um, submittals. 
Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Good evening. Um, I'm assuming you have the bid tabulation and the, and the letter of recommendation in front of you. Uh, on October 3rd, we opened bids for the utility portion yes. of the Rabbit Drive project. Uh, this portion of the project is completely in the, the city's purview. This is not part of the EDA project. Um, on the third, we opened, uh, it was uh, one, two, three, four, four bids. There were four, four uh, or three responsive bidders, I'm sorry. Uh, five Star Clark Construction, uh, Gonzalez Construction, and JF Trenching and Paving. The bids ranged from $295,773.34 to $478,903.30 respectively. Uh, the low bid was for two ninety five seven seventy three point three four, dollars and that was uh, submitted by Five Star Clark Construction. So we, we're making a recommendation that the contract be awarded for that amount. And as a point of clarification also, and just not to, to, to hit you later, but in, in going through the bid tabulation, there on this project, this project consisted of uh, over 2,000 feet of water line and seven fire hydrants. We cut out 500 feet and one hydrant to be installed earlier because the, the dirt contractor needed water for, for compaction once it gets started. When we made the changes to the bid form, on the hydrants, if you, have, if you have the bid tabulation there before you, we change that number to one. So we're gonna have to come back and add five hydrants to the contract once it's awarded. And just for your information, um, that amount that we're adding to, to the contract, which we'll do later, is $28,930. Now we had a, a, bid, a, 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 a budget amount of $332,000 for the project, so even with the addition of the 28,930, that puts us at 324, uh, 703, we're still below budget. So for, for uh, purposes of this bid, it was only one hydrant. It's only one hydrant. Right, yes, so sir. then going back, we'll have to go back and- We'll have to add addition. five more, because we need seven total for the project. Okay. But just so y'all know, it's still within the budget yeah. that we had for the project. Okay, so I have a quick question. <laughs> yes, sir. No, I, I addressed uh, uh, an issue with Ms. Reyes in reference to because there weren't any uh, gas line. The gas line wasn't going to be able, wasn't going to be installed. It was going to be a PVC pipe going through there. Yes, sir. We have some blind conduits at all the intersections. I discussed that with with Mr. Alvarez and the, the okay. Star Gas. Okay. And he said he's good with that because uh, in lieu of actually installing the lines, then leaving the crossing so that they don't have to try and, and bore or yeah. have to cut pavement after we built it then the, the cases are good. We're yeah, leaving yeah. blind twin four inch casings in, in all directions at all the intersections. So they will, it'll be ready when the time comes to be able to, yes, to do that project. And he just addressed it to me because he wasn't too much aware of what we were doing. And you know, he was saying why, why he, not he, do he it? He was involved with us in the initial planning and that was his suggestion, run the lines, but we don't know where they're gonna want them or, or what. And it, that's really a function of what goes in there. Not every lot's gonna need gas. How big so is the casing, Gilbert? Four inch. Four four inch. inch. Yes. There'll be two of them. And they usually run a two inch line. So. Yeah. And we got two in, each, in all directions at uh, each intersection. Are we addressing the issue that we have over here at the movies with the street? I know that Poserio ese ahí pone tal la vista, you know, that we don't have the right of way to be able to take care of that pothole, you know, that we're pointing fingers, everybody's pointing fingers with the owner. Well, the city chose to only take Rattler Drive uh, as part of the city street, everything else are private drives, sir, so actually it's still in, in the developer's hands. But are we going to address it, like, who, who's going to be responsible for it? Are we going to have the no. same issue we're having over here? It, this it's, it's the owners. You either own them or somebody else owns them. The city doesn't own them. Yeah. But we're not going to address it as who's going to be the owner? How are we going to address it, right? How are we addressing We can't that address right? that by plaque because we don't know who's going to we're finally own property. the property. We're sir. looking at closing the street and forcing them to fix it because it's a danger and a. You know, because it's ridiculous over here at the, at the movies. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. I, you know, I'm that, aware of it. But, but and it, if we have that issue there, we're going to have the same issue across the street. The suggestion was to make all those entrances public. Yeah. The city chose not to. That's the only way you can control it. 
But at this time, we need to start addressing it now from, with uh, the from, owner and address it. We should um, be able to approach it from the standpoint of it, it's uh, causing damage to vehicles and it's not safe, so we should be able to close the road until they fix it. Yeah. Okay. But that's, just, that's only going to affect the businesses there, the restaurants there. Well, it, the road belongs to those businesses. That's so it's up to them to fix it. And so the only way to close it, say, I mean, force them is we can't allow traffic through there because we're getting calls that people, uh, so it's the, a danger. So it's not the developer that owns the, the property there, it's just the actual businesses? Well, he's going to sell the property, sir. Those and, easements, those and, easements and go with the, the property. Roads. Yeah. And so people are calling and saying, hey, that pothole can uh, drive me into somebody else's car because I'm trying to swerve around or it's causing a lot of damage. So it's similar to the homeowners association, but in this case, it's a business owners association that needs to handle the payment or whatever needs to happen there. Yes, sir. Based on their amounts, whatever they choose. Yes, sir. Is that the same process yes, that they're, I mean, which goes back to the business owners that they have to. Well, I mean, we could send a proper notice and give them a certain time frame to address that issue and fix it. Yes, sir. But as Mr. Pedro suggested, what we do control is the entrance because that's in the right of way. Right. So we that's really the only out. hammer you have. Okay. So customers can't get to their business, it's going to affect them. Yeah, we can give them notice, you know, to fix it. If not, you know, at least advise them, you know, it needs to be fixed because it's yeah. not safe. Right. It's not safe. Yeah, it is. Right. But it's been like that for you. You'll say it's better. Yeah. It was, and then it was fixed, and then now it's back to to what yeah. it was. Uh, back again. It's right. Yeah. There's not a plenty of chakra in your life. Uh, we'll test the theory in this one and see how it works. <coughs> that's, that's really the only leverage you have is, is yeah. cut off the access. It just needs to be addressed. We can't just leave it there and, you know, I just, we just got to figure out a solution to it. We're having that problem right now. We're going to have it sooner or later, whoever's here. The, across the, street. the other option would be to adopt an ordinance saying all common access drives need to be concrete. And that helps to, to a certain extent. But that would have to be by ordinance so that you right. can enforce it. Yeah. Or, well, or yeah. request it. Let's see it. how we can address it, Mr. Perez. Yes, sir. Okay, to that. Okay. Okay, do we have at this time a motion? I so move. Okay, so we, is there a specific language on this one or to make a motion? No? No, sir. It's okay, just so to select the lowest bidder. Okay, so at this time it's a uh, Motion by Commissioner Ramirez to approve as per the amount uh, which is five star Clark construction for the grand total bid amount of 295,773 with 34 cents. Any further discussion? Well, we have a second. A second. I have a second by Commissioner Flores. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We have the next one also for real bill. Okay, next is item D, discussion and possible action to award contract to Five Star Clark Construction for the St. Ives Utilities to Support Commercial Center for the EDA project number 08010507. Uh, Five Star Clark Construction is a local company. They're well qualified to do the work. Um, they, they've got all the bids were correct and, and, and had bid bonds attached. So. Uh, we don't see any problem in awarding two five-star construction. Okay. The previous, I guess, item was to approve the lowest bidder. Approve the lowest bidder. Uh, okay, so we have a motion at this time. I so move to approve, ma'am. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Jones. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Garza. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Next uh, business and orders item five, city manager's report, letter A, discussion and possible action to authorize city manager to negotiate and execute all documents needed for the purchase of one 2020 Chevrolet several, Silverado 1500. Mayor and commissioners, I'd like to kind of back up a little bit on the uh, actual model and, and, and year because I'm still trying to negotiate with both Ford and Chevy okay. on a better deal. Uh, they always tell you they have the best deal, but uh, even though we purchased several from uh, Chevrolet, we like to consider to make sure that there's not a better deal with the Ford across the street. And so I'd like to leave it that they are, we're looking for a truck, and this is for the planning department. Where's Mr. Milan? Can you tell us a little bit what you're gonna be using it for, sir? 
Well, uh, with the transfer of one employee to the water department, we lost the pay for the sample that we placed in that. And it's going to be used for one person. Okay. So on the... Um, as far table as the motion, what would the just motion looking for a pick, pickup truck. Okay, so so we'll table, it. table it. No, just uh, approve it for a uh, best price. How do we change it today since this was designated this way? A pickup truck? Yeah, it's okay. We can, pickup. Yeah, you can just put a pickup truck, not necessarily a specific model. Okay. <clears throat> All right, do we entertain a motion at this time? I move more that uh, we authorize uh, the city manager to... Uh, Find a truck for uh, for uh, planning. planning planning department. Okay, we have a motion to approve That's by Commissioner Garza, second by Commissioner Ramirez. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next uh, is item six, executive session, chapter five five one, Texas Government Code, section five five one dot zero seven one, consultation <coughs> with attorney and section 551.087, economic development matters. It is 6.48 p.m. Okay, we're back from executive session. It is 7.47 p.m. And it's item seven, reconvene to regular session. And there's no action on item 7A, no action on item 7B, no action on item 7C, no action on item 7D and no action on item 7E. This time, do we retain a motion to so adjourn? To adjourn or... Have a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Jones. I'll take him down. We have a second <laughs> by Commissioner Jones. <laughs> 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. It is 7.48 p.m.